The Saffir Simpson hurricane wind scale gives us a general wind damage potential from hurricanes in the United States using categories one through five. Now historically, the category was assigned by a combination of factors, wind, central pressure, and storm surge, but now it is a wind only scale. Starting at category one, when the maximum sustained winds in the hurricane reach at least 74 miles per hour. As the wind speeds increase, so do the categories. Once you reach category three, you're talking about a major hurricane category three, four, or five. And those category fours and fives can produce catastrophic damage. Let's look at some past examples of hurricanes of each category at the time they made landfall. Starting with category one, a couple of examples, Claudette, 2003 on the Texas coast, and the often forgotten first landfall of Hurricane Katrina at category one in southern Florida. A couple of category twos, even though they're not major hurricanes, produce some major impacts. Isabel in 2003 in the Chesapeake area and Francis in 2004 on the east coast of Florida. Now the major hurricane. Starting with category three, two examples from the year 2005, Wilma on the southwest coast of Florida and Katrina, even though the storm surge was tremendous by wind, it was a category three at final landfall on the northern Gulf Coast. A couple of category four examples in the United States at landfall, Hugo in 1989 in South Carolina and Tiny Charlie on the southwest coast of Florida in 2004. And now finally, the category fives. Only three category fives have ever made landfall at that intensity in the United States. Two of them are shown here. Hurricane Camille, 1969 Northern Gulf Coast, and Hurricane Andrew, Southern Florida in 1992. So that's the Saffir-Simpson hurricane wind scale. I'm hurricane expert Dr. Rick Nabb.